No. No, stick shaker, stick pusher happened. And then the pitch up to, th- yes, that's correct. Yes, sir. You mentioned that the autopilot is off on impact and that the stick shaker uh, uh, disengaged. At what point did the, was the, did the stick shaker uh, disengage the autopilot? At what point? About 26 seconds before the end of the, the recording. Remember I said gear down one minute prior to the end of the recording. 20 seconds later, they commanded the flaps to uh, 15. As the flaps were moving to 15, which was about 20 seconds prior to uh, the end of the recording, the upset started 31 degrees nose high. Yes, sir? Uh, flaps were actually at five when they started to put the gear down. They put the gear down. Flaps were at five. They commanded flaps 15. And the way you put flaps down in these airplanes is you you, you go from different notches on the flap handle. Um, the flap handle was got back to the 10 degree, we think, 10 degree notch because all we see on the flight data recorder is the flaps got to 10 degrees. They didn't get to 15 degrees. And then they started trying to put the flaps back up as they tried to put the gear up, and the upset had already started to happen. So the upset started to happen while the flaps were in transition from five to the next position? That's right. Yes, ma'am. This is routinely done by the NTSB. We have a transportation disaster assistance team, as I briefed you earlier on. And um, we meet with the families. Uh, Our TDA team meets with them every day. They're having two meetings a day with them. I meet them uh, once a day, and I try to meet them just before I come and talk to you folks so that I can give them the information before they hear it in the news. And, uh, but this is a routine uh, thing that the Nas- uh, National Transportation Safety Board does every day. Let's take two more questions. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I, I couldn't. I couldn't hear you. Was it more I didn't say on impact. I said the last flight director, uh, flight data recorder hit that we got was at 900 feet MSL. The heading was 053 degrees. The roll was 26 degrees right roll. The pitch was 30 degrees nose down, and the airspeed was 100 knots. Mm-hmm. Tom, you had one more? Um, yeah. Is, is it possible, physically possible, if the pilot had grabbed this, if a pilot in a hypothetical plane grabs a stick shaker that is pushing forward, can he physically pull it up at that point? Yes. It yes. It could be possible for a reflexive action to pull the stick back, which would then pull the nose up. I will answer that like a lawyer does, right. and I will say, yes, it's possible. Please don't misinterpret what I said. I'm, I'm not saying that's what happened. I'm saying, am I answering your question and saying, yes, it's possible? Now, one other follow-up. If the boots were activated on virtually the entire flight, and yet the crew reported significant icing, is there concern, are you looking into the possibility that despite the fact the boots were activated, they may not have been working? Same question that the family just asked me an hour ago. answer I gave was the boot system cycles, as I explained to you earlier, it cycles from the outboard wings inboard to the different boot stations. And then it goes back to the tail and works up the vertical tail, then it does the horizontal tail, then it comes back and starts all over again. There's several seconds that happen in between there. Anybody that knows what goes on in aviation knows that ice or snow, there was light snow going on, can accumulate even though those boots are, are uh, activated. This was a de-ice system, not an anti-ice system. An anti-ice system keeps, it, uh, it keeps ice from adhering to the wings. De-ice system breaks it away and, and gets rid of it. Um, <clears throat> so 
when they looked out there and saw and made, and made the comment on the CVR, and again, we're just speculating here, uh, it could very easily, and I'm talking as an aviator who's done this many times and looked out the wing and seen the buildup on the wings and so forth. Um, even though you have the system on, the snow could be sticking to the front of the wing, and you could think that you could say that's significant ice buildup. Um, you could be looking at the windshield. For instance, they said uh, windshield uh, uh, or buildup on the windshield. Um, the windshield is electrically heated, so ice does not adhere to the windshield. But every pilot that I know that flies commercial aviation looks out the window and looks at the at the uh, windshield wiper, has a little knot, a little nut that holds the windshield wiper on, and looks for buildup on that little nut. That's a good indicator as to whether or not you're getting ice. Um, so I suspect, I suspect that when they're saying I see significant ice buildup on the windshield and the leading edges of the wing, it could quite possibly be they saw it on that nut on the windshield wiper. That's what they're saying. Um, so I say I don't want to read too much into what we're hearing and try to get it down to such a fine science that says, no, these guys had this or they had that. I mean, all we know is what they said on the CVR, and that is, we have significant ice buildup on the windshield and the leading edge of the wings. Yes, sir. The stick pusher engages push the nose down. The first pitch excursion is up. That's correct. The stick pusher comes first, and then the airplane pitches up. That's correct. Okay. I won't ask you what that means. Well, we just talked about that over here. You know, the the possibilities are, you know, there's a lot of possibilities. And we can talk about possibilities all day long, but that's not fact and evidence. All right. Uh, okay, I'll take one more. Going back to the families, uh, we spoke to them. Did you also speak to Karen and Joe Wilson? Whose house was hit by the plane? Karen and Joe Wilson? I, I have not. I have not. These are families of the victims that were on the airplane. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you very much, folks. We'll see you tomorrow.